Simple changes in design can create huge changes in our behaviour. These changes can be used to stimulate ethical and sustainable behaviour and to tackle some of the biggest problems in the world around us. Already design approaches have enabled us to recycle, heat more efficiently or increase our exercise patterns. Such changes can be simple, as you can see in this example from the intensive care unit at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. The addition of a red line painted down part of the wall and across the floor serves as a great visual reminder for clinical staff to wash their hands before interacting with the patient. I'm Professor of Design and Craft at the University of Wolverhampton and a Principal Investigator of this collaborative research project which is funded by the AHSC, that is the Arts and Humanities Research Council. The project has looked at current approaches of design for behaviour change across different sectors including sustainability, health, social design and safety, as well as understanding and accessibility for small and medium-sized enterprises. The project has included a broad literature review as well as an online survey and two follow-up focus groups to understand the concerns by public and private sector organisations about behaviour change approaches and their implementation through design. The research team has seven partners, consisting of seven researchers and four advisors, to bring together the broad range of expertise necessary to enable this broad overview. The cross-disciplinary literature review mapped design for behaviour change strategies from the behavioural sciences across what they call the agency structure divide. And that divide means that sometimes we might be trying to encourage someone to change their behaviour, try and persuade them, or in other times people are just going to act differently because of the environment they're in. So everybody rides a bike in Amsterdam, um, we might try and persuade someone to eat a more healthy snack at times. The review highlights a diverse number of approaches and strategies that are available to designers. And what's lacking within this is an evidence base for which particular strategies may work at what particular time. So that's something that we're hopefully trying to strengthen through this project. The benefit of the review is to offer small to medium enterprises access to the design for behaviour change literature. And we've been able to map approaches, visualise those approaches and explain those approaches so that they can use those to develop innovation within small and medium enterprises. The online survey um, and follow-up focus group address private and public organisations um, to gain a knowledge about the importance of sustainable innovation and their use of behaviour change um, and also their access to information about behaviour change and design for behaviour change and how they implement it across their organisation. The survey was completed by 131 respondents. Half of these respondents were from private sector organisations, with the remaining half made up of public, social, non-for-profit and charitable organisations. Of these, about a third were micro-businesses, a third were small to medium-sized enterprises, and a third were large organisations. So it offered a good spread um, for comparison when we came to do the analysis. When we asked about innovation, the most important drivers were the improvement of services. Um, and this responded to demand and market share um, for that business. Um, legal and ecological reasons um, were least important, so perhaps this indicated a sort of lack of focus on these areas and a more of a drive for innovation. Obviously we need to know about behaviour change, and we asked about this, and there are over 90 percent of awareness among respondents about the concept of behaviour change. However, less than a third said they actually used any specific guidance um, and 31 percent then said that they would actually like to use guidance of some sort and this indicated a need for some sort of information and support in this area. So as well as using behaviour change and design be for behaviour change as a, a way of innovation, and driving innovation. There were also ethical uh, benefits that, that respondents to both the uh, survey 
and focus groups saw. Um, so this was related to health and well-being, social sustainability, ecological sustainability um, were particularly rated highly. So when we inquired more about access, major obstacles named were time, access to relevant resources and a lack of evidence-based examples. In particular, a lack of time might indicate the need for more education and evidence to raise the benefits as a priority area. This project has been the starting point for creating a platform and hub for advancing design for behaviour change. The key findings of the project have revealed the need for more information and in-depth understanding, for a shared language to communicate between the various stakeholders, for more extensive debate about ethical questions, there's also a need for more case studies and examples to guide work in this area. And finally, for agreed methods of evaluation to help build a library of examples and case studies.